Edfu Foundation Incorporated utilizes science and the teachings of our ancestors to improve humanity. We want to reunite and uplift our family throughout the planet. Our message or theme for 2021 is Original People United. We work hand in hand with our sister organization, the Conservancy Corp, investing in the future of humanity through our programs and advocacy. We seek to move our civilization from its current state to that of a type one civilization on the Carter Jeff civilization scale and beyond in a spiritually holistic way. We stand by the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Durban Declaration and Program of Action and support United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and Environment Justice. Support Eiffel Foundation by checking out our page and subscribing. Afronauts, I want to thank you for joining us. We have uh, some wonderful guests on the show. We have uh, Joshua Mackey and Michael Richards from Black to Nature joining us, as well as Dr. Katusha Bento out of Leeds University in the UK. Is that correct? University of Edinburgh. Oh, I apologize. Okay. University of Edinburgh. Okay. And of course, we have our co-host, um, Mook Nito. You dig. Paco. Paco. Got to say something, man. Hello. <laughs> you killing and, me. <laughs> and last but not least, our newest member to the team, Afronauts team, Dr. Lawada Richmond. Thank you, guys. All right, all right. What's your t-shirt say, Lawana? Afrofuturism Lounge. Have to get my brand. Yeah, right. There we go. There we go. And hopefully we'll and we'll be having it back again this year, right? For yeah, I mean, it's either, it's either going to be um, hybrid or virtual. Okay. Um, it really depends on you know how we move. If we end up being able to have Comic Con in person, I'm gonna be right there in the streets. But if not, I'll be sitting behind my laptop, safely away from all the people in their cooties. <laughs> Oh, wait, uh, really quick, um, we should have our other team member, Will Simmons, trying to join. He okay. sent me a message. He's trying to raise his hand. I'm not sure. Yes, I do see Will Simmons. Okay. Will, are you there? Here we go. I was trying to raise my hand for a little bit, and I couldn't couldn't get it to roll through. No, it's all good. Uh, thanks for joining us. What's thanks going on, going. Will? What's going on, y'all? Hey, 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 so this is Black History Month, so um, we just want to give acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement to that, and thanks to our ancestors for doing all that they did to uh, bring us to this point in human history in the universe. And so uh, later on, we're going to have some a couple of polls with some uh, Black Card Revoke questions, you know what I mean? Uh, Want to definitely uh, shout out to them for making those cards uh, an alternative to the cards against humanity. You know what I mean? Um, but let's get started real quick. Um, <clears throat> Joshua, Michael, and William, you guys are all from uh, Black to Nature. Can you tell us about your organization and uh, what got you involved in starting an organization such as this? Well, do you want to? Oh, yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so basically, Black to Nature is an event platform, um, as you know, um, for connecting Black community uh, through indoor and outdoor events. Um, we got started mainly because our founder, Mike, is a big outdoors guy himself. And we, he really noticed that there's a, there was a discrepancy, right, in the um, amount of Black people that were outside and, you know, enjoying outdoor activities and things of that nature. So Mike kind of presented the idea to Josh where they started working together to build the platform and then they brought me on board with the overarching goal of just getting our people up, out and active, getting them comfortable with being outdoors and getting them connected with other people that enjoy outdoors that look like us because a lot of times in our community, there just isn't that, there, there isn't a space for that and that isn't really a common thing that we do. So we really want to bridge that gap to where we could create a space where you can all come together, fellowship, enjoy nature, learn something from each other, and just grow as a community. 
real quick, I want to I want to jump in right there. You said there really isn't a space for that in our communities, and that's part of the reason I I we titled the show um, "Environmental Justice Now," right? Because due to environmental racism, we oftentimes don't have green spaces in our communities, um, yeah. which like lead us to have to go elsewhere in order to enjoy nature, which also leads us not, you know, um, growing up or living in and thinking about um, how we might interact with nature. Yeah, that's true. There's definitely, there's there's that big uh, gap where there just isn't a big space for us to kind of interact with nature. Then like you said, those environmental gaps where there just aren't a lot of people getting out there because they didn't grow up in it, they, they aren't comfortable with it. So we're trying to help bridge that for, you know, we want the everyday user, whether you're somebody that's always outdoors, always active, you know, like myself, Mike or Josh, or if you're just somebody that says, hey, I have never been hiking in my entire life and I want to get out there and try it, but I don't want to go by myself. Um, so that's one of the best things that we love about Black Nature is we want the inexperienced beginner all the way up until if you're a super outdoor head, you know, and out here hunting and fishing, catching your own food and growing your own stuff like uh, like Josh does. Oh, yeah. So we again, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Shelly. No, no, no. So I was going to say you brought up another point, uh, which makes your organization so relevant and so important. And that's, um, you said, hiking alone in nature, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, black while hiking, the anxiety yeah. black people have to, to go into nature alone um, due to racism and systematic oppression, right? So was yeah. that another thing that factored into it? Like, hey, let's do this, let's enjoy nature, but let's do it in groups so we can do it safely? Oh, I don't wanna know you want me to hog all the questions, Mike. <laughs> well, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, any one of y'all can answer. So pretty much like the, the main premise as Will mentioned, it's an event platform, right? So. You know, just understanding, you know, all of the economic or socioeconomic disadvantages that's been afforded to our community. It's made a lot more sense instead of trying to build a business on top of Instagram, on top of meetup.com, or just create a local group here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's actually just create a platform to where anybody within the U.S. and in two years launch globally. But anyone that is any... We're very inclusive, so I, I want to say that first, but our main goal is the Black community, right? So the main thing we're looking really to do is arm our people with knowledge as well as connect our community. So how we're connecting our community is basically by providing this platform. So those that have a little bit more expertise that want to start organizing hikes, walks, et cetera, within their own community, they can leverage our platform to do so. So you don't have to go to Eventbrite, meetup.com, et cetera, to say, hey, this group is organizing a hike on this day. You just leverage the Black to Nature platform. Oh, Those that are, let's say brand new to a city, or let's say you've been somewhere for a while, but you just, you're not the most sociable person. That's when you'll kind of go to the Black to Nature platform, browse the current events that's in your, your city or state, and you can kind of connect with other people, again, in your city or state. Or if you're somebody that's just brand new to a city, and you're like, man, I want to go biking on Sunday at 2 p.m., you leverage our platform again, put that uh, event on the platform and everyone that's in your city or state that's actually plugged into our ecosystem will be notified that Henry at whatever wants to bike at this place. You know what I mean? So we make it very straightforward, very simple. We're also educating our community through what we're calling our essentials page, where we're gonna teach you the proper's of survival, of the mechanics of survival skills, gun safety, and a whole slew of other things like that, how to grow your own food, right? I feel like, again, going back to the socioeconomic disadvantages afforded to us, you can't even look at the school system to be properly educated on how, on how we can live properly, right? Um, I'm talking to my wife now about a lot of things. And one thing she's realizing, especially when COVID came in, there's a lot of studies, right? A lot of these case studies and things are typically done on white bodies. And as you understand genetic makeup of the black human body, a lot of these studies truly aren't applicable to us. You know, and I could get super deep with that, but I'll just kind of leave it there. But, you know, it, it gets really, really deep. So one thing we're trying to do with Black Tenacious is it originally started out with me going on hikes by myself and feeling like, well, shoot, I don't know if I'm going to walk into a group and some people find that I'm a harm to them or whatever the case may be. Or, you know, or I'm, why am I the only person out here? So it really just started out, let me just get other Black people outdoors. 
no, no. Like it, it makes it makes perfect sense. Um, Mook Needle, did you have a question? Because I was going to say a comment real quick. I just want to make sure other people have an opportunity. I have a know. comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, Luana. So you just have you know listening to you, you just make me think about the news story that came out last summer about the brother that was out hiking in was it Indianapolis? It, this all like there's so many stories right now. Um, well, please when, elaborate on the brother that the <laughs> one that happened in Indianapolis. I know we talked about it, but it had it people who made that brother. The brother was out just trying to trying to kick it and get enjoy some nature and a group of white people grabbed him and was like trying to lynch him in a public park. Like they just randomly like, ooh, there goes a black person. And um, the only reason they weren't successful is that there were bystanders who intervened. Right. And we also have the case uh, in New York City where um, there was a guy out there, a brother out there bird watching and the lady um, called the police on him, right? And Fortunately, he 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 videotaped it, and so you know they, they were able to de-escalate that situation. So you know, uh, enjoying nature is not something that we can just freely do. We have to uh, make a conscious effort to safeguard ourselves when we go to enjoy nature. Other than you know, what I'm saying on top of the fact that like you need to respect nature when you're in nature, right? So you need to be cognizant of that as well. But we, there's another layer to it when it comes to uh, black people. So yeah, that's what um, I was gonna say too. Like, yeah, you know, it, like the brother that got accosted. Yeah, that, that's a a worry I would say. But for me personally, not being in nature all the time, I'm more worried about nature. You know what I mean? You know, something jumping out like ah, it eat me alive. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm out there by myself. And, you know, I would love to have other people around me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. To uh, you know, make sure that I'm not eaten by a bear or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about white people personally, but I'm worried more worried about nature because I'm not used to nature. You yeah. know what I mean? Be, like I said, only when I was growing up, the only nature I can remember, you know, being from the urban area is a little Cub Scout, Boy Scout thing. You know what I mean? And then I haven't even been fishing that many times in my life. You know what I mean? So I'm really loving what I'm hearing from you guys. You know, as far as bringing you know, us melanated people in back to nature, you know what I mean? That's, that's pretty decent. It's, so that's really what, what we're trying to do is we want to demystify going outdoors, you know, but I also want to take it a step further by again, educating us as well and to make it accessible to any and everybody. So to create an account on our platform is 100% for free. To create events on our platform, that's free. Um, to RSVP, meaning you're setting you're basically saying you're going to show up to an event that's free as well. We also have paid tiers and stuff like that, but really for our everyday user, you don't have to worry about any type of fees at all. We have no paywalls or anything like that. Everything again is hundred percent accessible. Even our essentials page. Um, one of the things we're going to be working on as we continue to grow is actually start connecting with other groups that teach gun safeties. If we can get free gun classes, you know, just basics like that. So we actually partnered up with one company out in Portland, Oregon called Oregon Walks. Apparently in uh, Portland, Oregon, they're still practicing redlining, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm on the West Coast. I can tell you if, you, don't, if you don't know the history of Portland, you should really look it up. Um, they definitely redlined people and had them in an area where like, basically they all got like the whole black town got flooded back and I think it was like the twenties or something like that. And like thousands of people died. Like, so, uh, yeah, we have these issues everywhere. It seems that we are. And so it's really, oh, I know I'm really appreciative uh, of you doing something like this. Cause I grew up in a neighborhood. I grew up in an area, uh, where nature was prevalent. Um, uh, and I have, I have, a. Uh, Tanya Gray here. Thank you for joining us from Harpuzani Virtual Poetry Cafe. And uh, she's actually a, a family member of mine. And so she's that's, she's shaking her head yes, as well as Paco, because they grew up in the same areas uh, as me. And they know, like, we used to go to the park and lakes and fish and all that stuff all the time as young people. Like, uh, as a matter of fact, Paco, didn't you just go hunting? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paco is not from the Bronx, man. <laughs> no, Paco is me. in the Paco's in the Bronx. He's, he's not the, from I'm, the I'm Bronx. saying, I'm saying he's not from the Bronx, man. 
Huh? No, no, no. Oh, man. We, oh, we, wow. I, I, I got a problem. <laughs> I, got a real, I got a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But, pa but Paco just went hunting a little while ago. You know what I mean? They went deer hunting. I don't know. I don't think it was successful, but you know what I mean. Like so, you know. So we're not a monolith as as black people. You know, there's, there's many variations of us, and so there are a lot of us that do enjoy nature and do enjoy going out. And also, like Mugnito said, like you know, he's from the urban area, so he's not used to it. Um, and so they should be afforded that opportunity. Uh, we also have Dr. Katusha Bento with us from uh, Edinburgh University uh, by way of Brazil, Sao Paulo. And uh, tell us a little something about your experience with nature. Well, I uh, am a city, kind of city and rural area girl. I grew up in, in the rural area with horses and pigs and, and kitchen and everything. Wow chicken uh, and everything else um, and dogs and cats and birds. Um, but more recently, and maybe because of the university, my life was very urban. Uh, for the past 15 years, I am part of a quilombo. Uh, quilombo, I don't know if you are familiar with this word, but let's be familiar with this word because it is uh, it was meant to be the community built by enslaved people who ran away from the masters or the colonial system to mm -hmm. create a, an alternative way of a society be, growing their own food having their own security system but that was a more simplistic understanding of quilombo nowadays we understand that quilombo is the place where we protect where we reinvent renegotiate african culture throughout african diasporas everyone can actually protect reinvent renegotiate black culture therefore i am a quilombo we are a quilombo and every time we we meet to create solidarity that's where quilombo is that's the legacy of our ancestors so i am part of a quilombo community in the rural area of sao paulo uh, it's called quilombo anastasia and it is where um, an afro-brazilian religion is based uh, called candomblé i'm not sure if you are familiar with but just to have a a, a translation or maybe the way that in the diaspora, in the African diaspora, the religions uh, were established, it is something similar to Santeria in Cuba. Um, yeah, I, 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 am I getting closer to what it might mean? So like you're like Yoruba, Yoruba? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Similar to, your, similar to Yoruba as well? It is an Yoruba religion, but according to the African diaspora, in different places, we have different names for this religion. And of course, different uh, dogmas or different rituals, right. you know? And, and, that, and that was an adaptive right. behavior because the dominant colonial society would not let you um, practice your, or yeah. not let us practice our natural uh, ways and spirituality. So you had to kind of mask it yes. in other things. So in Brazil, the Afro-Brazilian religion is called Candomblé, where instead of gods and goddesses, we have orishas. Uh, I'm telling you the story of, uh, of a quilombo and the religion because these are the values that sustain this particular quilombo, which is have respect uh, for everything that you step on. You have respect for the nature, have respect for uh, the ground, the soil, the, the dirt, the flowers, the grass, the trees, but also the animals and each other, human beings. Right. So, so nature is ingrained in your way of life, essentially. Yes. And it's also representative of the Orishas. So we have Orishas that represent the rain and the volcano and so many other elements of the, of the nature. So if they are our ancestors and they are our, they are part of our higher self as well, not only something that is out there as gods and goddesses, they are in us. Um, so because of this, for the past 15 years, being part of this Colombo, 
if you go around the house and I have a video uh, of the of the territory if you want to watch I can I can also share with you uh, I, I kind of recorded where we take showers where is the house if you want I can show you a little bit of the clips that I did maybe 30 seconds for each one of them just for you to have a, a sense of and those are, the is the, are those on your website as well or they we will be on the website, website yes. they will be on the website they will be yes <laughs> but um what i meant to say is when you walk around if you walk around with any of the siblings it, not necessarily they were elders you're gonna learn a little bit about herbs you're gonna learn a little bit about which ones you can eat which ones you can make tea which ones even the dogs, if you wash them closely, if you have a little bit more, you're going to see they, them eating maybe some mint or something. So everything is, uh, I don't want to make it sound romantic because we have our struggle, okay? Uh, Which is, but, that's actually something I want to, to ask you about as well. I don't mean to cut you off, but I did want to ask you about, um, you know, we're talking about environmental justice, and it's it's quite clear that we, as uh, melanated people, we do have a relationship with nature that's um, intimate, right? It's it's all a part of our ways, our ways of life. Even if you live in an urban area, I'm sure Mook Needles poured out a little liquor for a homie or for nature, right? There there are certain things that we inherently do to pay respects to the world that we live in and and give respect to it, right? Um, but we face an onslaught of colonial and imperialism, which kind of makes uh, environmental racism and it makes environmental justice imperative. So I know there's another issue that you deal with in the Colombo. And I'm sorry, Michael and Black to Nation, we're going to get back to you real quick. But um, I just want to ask Katusha about this. Uh, when it comes to environmental justice, what is your biggest concern in Sao Paulo? Well, the the Quilombo is there for the past 25 years, and it is the result of land struggle, land rights. So they just got the recognition of the land because they fought for that. And that is, you know, people not always survive to see how the land is right now. The, mo the main concern right now is um, all these herbs that I'm talking about, all the trees they planted, and we are not able to hold on to absolutely everything that we built because of the rains like global warming is a thing and uh, the amount of rains is destroying the current house where the elders are living in uh, so we are creating we are building a, an ecological house and also a um, brick house if i can say that for the lack of my my vocabulary in English, I'm sorry. Um, and in in terms of the environment, the rains are making the house fall apart on our heads. And if we don't finish building the new houses now, we might be in danger. Like we already are, but um, this is this is a serious thing. The rain and the animals, because the the security of our our pigs, our chicken, gooses, we have all sorts of animals that are also part of this environment. So everyone will be affected uh, because of the lack of support that we've been having. The, the roads are destroyed. It's very difficult access because of the rain. So the mayor, all the government institution, institutions are not really supporting or um, allowing us to to make our voices to be heard in in the city and outside so so essentially like so climate change and land rights are two of the ba major issues that you deal with down at the colombo and okay. sao paulo all right and and I did, you'll find more information on our website and i'll put a link into the description of this uh, recording on how you can assist and get more information about the yele Ache Colombo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Ele ache de Ansã em Quilombo, Anastácia, São Paulo. Uh, oh, apologies, my, my Portuguese. Uh, it's fine, don't worry. <laughs> the, the, the website, the links are going to be shared for you to donate, for you to support, and more of anything, I think it's important for us to understand how we can build a Quilombo without having... Right, and um, 
so we've been doing Black History Month conversations with uh, Dr. Katusha Bento and some other people um, since October, when October was the Black History Month in the UK. In November, it was Black History Month in Brazil. And one of the things we discussed is, is finding those commonalities between us in diaspora, and we're building towards a global youth summit in at the Colombo uh, once uh, we can get under the out from under the scourge of, of COVID. So please stay tuned for information for that. And please hang out a little bit, Dr. Bento. I appreciate you being here. Does anyone have any questions for her before we get back to uh, Black to Nature? Yeah, this don't have nothing to do with uh, nature though, but people still speak Portuguese? Yeah, we only speak Portuguese. <laughs> wow. I'm just of ignorant. course, some words in Yoruba because of the community is a Candomblé community, is a Yoruba religion. We we speak some words in Yoruba for more, some rituals and some rituals. Yeah, it's funny. More Black people speak Portuguese <laughs> than Portuguese people That's speak. That's incredible. It. <laughs> oh, hey, man. quick question for you: um, uh, Do you know who your Orisha God is? I do. Yeah, it's. Right there, uh, Shango. But you you have to open your 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 life. You have to read your life on the shelves, and it will reveal your Orisha, the guardian of your head. That's what it called. Cool. Luana, you had a question. Yeah, I mean, I, but really now you kind of went into something else. I would say that I still haven't figured that out, but I've been really resonating with Oshun. Um, but I think a lot of people just want Oshun to be there, Orisha, for obvious reasons. Um, my question is about the film Quilombo. I don't know um, how closely would you like for people who have no idea about Quilombos, is that a film that you would recommend or do you think it takes people off track if they watch it? Well, there are there there is one key reading that I can share with you on the on the link because there are some videos on Quilombos that are still making Quilombos look very romantic and as if we live in the 19th century. <laughs> and this is not a thing. We still need an antenna to get uh, internet. We, we, are, we, use, we don't always use our hands to eat. So, um, so just watch to, to, for references. Um, I am sorry, I don't want to be only academic. So if you just give me the time to finish this recording and I will make sure that I add some references that are not just books, uh, but videos and uh, some other material. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And like, I, and um, we'll be editing this. So if you have things that you want us to show, like while you, do, while you were talking about that, just let me know and I'll put, just or send them over to me and I'll put them in uh, when we edit it, okay? Okay, nice. Yeah, right. So, um, Sheldon, with the um, the black card game, I wasn't able to um, get into the polls, and I so I played. The reason it took so long, I played with a few different tools, and I created a Kahoot. Okay. Um, if people are interested in seeing whether or not they are they remain black card eligible despite <laughs> well, aspiring well, I, to. I think I think at this point it's like kind of like a requirement, right? It's Black History Month. <laughs> So if you you have uh, the ability to share, but, but really quick before we go into that, we have um, Tanya Gray from Harpuzani Virtual Poetry Cafe. I want to give her a chance to introduce herself. Tanya, are you there? Sorry, I know, I know, I know. That's why I was like, oh, let me make sure she's still there, right? Um, but um, yeah, so what you're doing with the Virtual Poetry Cafe is you are actually having artists from all around the world come in to, to tell their story through song and music and poetry. And a lot of times these people are talking about uh, environmental justice and racism, right? I know we had a conversation about uh, the Indian farmers and things like that. So you wanna give a real quick, uh, I mean, not real quick, but do, would you like to explain and talk about what you're doing and, and how also how it pertains to environmental justice? So, um. I work very closely with some of the protesters in India that are protesting um, the situation with the legislation that has to do with the farming issue. And so that's how it would relate to this subject. And um, what I do with the Virtual Poetry Cafe is that I'm connecting word artists 
from around the world to make our world smaller. So it's black and brown, black and brown artists from different parts of the world getting together once a month and we celebrate word art and it's rap, poetry, and through com comedy. I haven't had any comedians yet, but um, we've had great uh, artists. Luke was one of the artists last month and he was amazing. And I'm looking forward to the artists that are coming this session, which is gonna be on February 27th. Um, one of the main artists is out of the Solomon Islands in Melanesia, and he is amazing. And I'm so excited about the relationship that I'm building. And our commentator is, our moderator is from Brazil. And I'm looking forward to um, connecting with some more artists from Brazil. And we have an artist coming out of Senegal and an Afro-Asian artists out of China, and I'm really excited about the project. Excellent, that's great. And I'm sure, will you come back and tell us like how it's going and you know share clips and things like that, like once you get, get it really rolling and cool. Because um, I can tell you like, so I did share, um, I work with someone from the Solomon Islands and I shared uh, the link that you sent me over. And they're like, wow, that's so awesome. Like someone knows my, like, my artist. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, people know. And um, th this person I work with, like, you know, I I used to live in Hawaii, so I kind of know them, you know. Mm -hmm. When you live in Hawaii, it's, it's like a different community. It's like it's like a colony inside the U.S. And so, you know, Hawaiians listen to a lot of reggae. It's a, it's a different vibe. And, like, Pacific Islanders, like, it's just a different vibe. So, um, so yeah, it was really cool. And it's, they, it's really, I could feel the appreciation for being included. So I just want to applaud you for that. And um, uh, I will definitely share the links and hope you can stick around for a little bit as we discuss um, other environmental justice topics because this is an important issue all around the world. And a lot of people may not realize that, you know, we have a lot of Afro everything, right? Um, Afro Honduran, Afro Nicaraguan, Afro Colombian, um, not too many Afro-Argentinian because they sent all their Afro people to war. Um, but you know what I'm saying? But we, it, there's, there's no place that we're not in the world. And it's- Afro-Mexican. Yeah, exactly. The first president of Mexico was, was black. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, yeah. So like Katusha said, like, and uh, we're, one thing we're trying to do is we're trying to, and as Tanya said as well, trying to make the world smaller, trying to make it a, a international Colombo. Yeah. So I just I just want to add, Tanya, you looking real sexy today. I, I, <laughs> oh, hey, yo, Mo, that's my cousin, yo. What that means? <laughs> we all related you know, somehow. <laughs> something that Mook said is that you know sometimes we take things for granted. I remember when I first moved to Harlem, and um, you know I've always been community based, and I took a group of young men to the beach because I'm from Long Island. So, you know, we're, we're used to going to the beach. And I remember taking these boys who are like in their thirties, forties now, and they went to the beach and they started like jumping and acting really crazy with the sand. And I'm like, what is wrong with them? It was their very first time ever Didn't going see? to the beach because I took it for granted because it was part of my environment. And I just remember one of the boys or Daryl, who's like a big rap artist right now, he cried. He said, I only saw beaches on television. He didn't know it existed. He was like, I didn't know it existed. I was like, you saw it on TV, right? But I think Yo, sometimes- like, You live in Harlem, it's less than like five, 10 miles. That's, you know, not no fault of his, but like, that's crazy, right? Yeah, most it's people don't leave the block, you know, in the hood, man. They don't just, they don't leave the block, bro. It's like a phobia, you know what I mean? Yes, you're right. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to talk too much, but you know, I lived on 143rd Street and oftentimes when people said, I'm going downtown, they meant they were going to 125th Street because they didn't leave their world. And so we have privilege. And so sometimes like, so when you're saying, oh, you know, something about not going out into the, you know, not going out into the environment and you're not used to it. I mean, somebody else, you know, who's lived a privileged life would go, what? But I understand. No, 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 definitely. And that's one reason I'm really glad that we're able to have uh, 
Joshua William and Mike here from Black to Nation. I really appreciate them over that platform, man, because that's one thing we need to do as, as a community is to get back into nature because that's where we draw our energy and our power from. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that is where you're gonna get your center. That is where you're gonna be able to deal with um, all the stress and issues that are going on in your life by like being able to take at least five minutes or whatever, how much time you're able to take and just enjoy the fact that, yo, there's something miraculous going on naturally occurring, you know what I'm saying, right here, you know? So um, again, like, how do you guys feel about like what we've been saying? I know you guys have been a little quiet, but um, you know, I want to get back to you and big up your platform, so. I'll let uh, Josh talk, because yeah, like we've, we, me and Josh have spoken about a lot of stuff, and he's, this brother actually educates me on a lot of things as well, Um, so he's someone I, I derive a lot of knowledge from, but uh, Josh? No, everything that was said, you know, I resonate with, you know, when uh, Dr. Bento was talking about uh, Columbo's, I've never heard of Columbo's before, I don't even know that if that's how you pronounce them, but, you know, everything about the, uh, you know, Orisha gods, you know, I, I studied these things. I read uh, uh, the origin of the major Western religions, you know, that were all based in Africa by uh, Dr. Dr. Ben and Dr. Dr. Yaka. I can't even pronounce his name, but I do my black Yakinin. history. Yakinin, yeah. yeah. You know, I started watching them on YouTube back in the early 2000s and was fascinated. And uh, so I do my research on black history and black people through those types of guys. Uh, I could go on for days naming names, but yeah, everything you, you all were talking about resonates with me and uh, yeah, great conversation. Yeah, and I think that's something that we all like, you know, and that's one of the reasons we do this show, right? So we want to bring exposure to not just our artists and our musicians like Moog Nito and, um, you know, and uh, and our great thing is like Luana and stuff and uh, artists like David Walker, who was on last week, but we also want to bring exposure to issues and connections to our community that they may not know that are there, right? We want people to know like, yo, there's a repository. Now, I don't, like you said, uh, Mike, I don't need to go to Eventbrite. I could go um, or to a Google group. I could go to Black to Nature. You know what I'm saying? I could go to Black to Nature and, and I could set my events up there and we could do things there. You know what I mean? So I know Imagine. for a fact, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, move. Joshua, I see your fish right over there. You look like a family man. Uh, you got kids? Yeah, just uh, me and my wife just had uh, our first kid on the 19th of December. So we have a little girl oh, named okay. Sophia. Okay, how, this, do you, yeah. how do you plan to uh, introduce her to nature? Like, what is, oh, what is your, I mean, you know, what's your plan? How are you going to do that? Man, she has no choice but to be involved in nature. Oh, I, know, I know that. I'm <laughs> just saying, what, what is your fantasy of, of bring her bring her introducing her into nature you know what i mean well uh so her, her dad is a farmer so she's gonna be go ahead mike now i was gonna say before you talk are you on your laptop right now i am can you take them to your garage and and your bed yeah. yeah show them the garage you, you trust me <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, she got she go to the garage and it's on um, <laughs> all right well we'll give you a second we'll give you a second to take us to the garage um but I sent a link to everyone in the chat. Please. And I'll share my screen. I, I just I just harvested a bunch of stuff, so it's kind of bare right now. I got a bunch of seedlings that are that are doing their oh, thing. Oh, well, we want to see. That's important. That's important. Okay. That's really important. It's not, it's like, not lush as I want it to be, but I, I can take you in there and show you some stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really yeah, listen, man. So I I'm I have I'm in California. I have an orange tree that I'm looking at. And then uh, we have a garden stuff that like zucchini, tomatoes, like my son grew like 20 tomato bushes just from seeds from the, the grocery store, you oh, know? Wow. Nice. So like that oh. stuff is important. It's important nice. for people to realize nice. like, yo, I could just like, and I, if you go on my Instagram page, you'll see like we took pictures of the stuff that we harvested. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that's important. Like, because as, after we do this Kahoot, we're going to do What's Next with Paco, and Paco's going to talk about food deserts. But um, can I just say the thing about nature and why it's important? Oh, yes, oh, yes of course, please. No, I was just going to, I mean, what, before, as we're going into nature, I mean, um, a lot of us, you know, this not going to the beach and not going out, not leaving the block, it's detrimental to us, um, not just our health, but our spirit. 
and we are disconnected mm. from the earth when we don't like let our feet touch something other yes. than cement, yes. and carpet, and asphalt. Yes, it's funny. Yes. My parents, and uh, just a quick side note: I used, I was a kid. I grew up in the country. I used to always walk outside barefoot. My parents used to hate it, but I I love <laughs> doing it because that feeling of just walking outside in the country and you know feeling dirt and not necessarily gravel. It's just, there's something about that. Like to the point now I have my dad doing it at his house. He periodically, he'll go outside barefoot because he says he just feels more connected spiritually when he does it. Oh, that's yeah. dope. That's super dope. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you should always- Matter of fact, sure. I, just cause you said that I'm walking outside in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you should you should definitely try and do it at least once a day. Um, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. If, it. if it's straight ice, it's gonna be two seconds. Or I'm gonna feel it for two seconds. <laughs> Hey, hey, while Joshua is set, <laughs> while Joshua is setting up uh, his shop for the uh, to show us his, his harvest, um, if you, I sent a link in the chat. If you could all go there and sign in, it's this Kahoot right here, and we're gonna do our black uh, car revoked. Well, we're gonna keep our black cars because we're gonna answer this question, these questions like properly. So yeah, because we know the, the answers. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know which ones you chose, so I would I just took pictures of the cards and sent them to you. And uh, shout out to uh, Cards for All People uh, for creating that game, Black Card Revoke. Um, so it looks like Joshua was ready, but okay, we see we got three people in there. Um, we got four. I'm not going in. All right, so all right, let's do this real quick. And then, then we're gonna get to Joshua because he's in the garage and we wanna see what he got going on. But yeah, I guess start it up. Is everybody who's going in in? I think so. We got five people. All right, here we go. First question. And you gotta answer quick too, because you get points for being That's fast. Right. Approximately how long did Sophia have to fight? All her life. Uh, all, all her life. Yo. All her life. All, I get it. All her life. Yeah. So, so we're not supposed to say the answer. We're just supposed to pick them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just pick yo, Yeah. Just pick it on your screen. Just pick it on your screen. This is true. Okay. All right. So everybody see what, how it works now? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not in. I'm not in. I couldn't get in. All right. Let's see. I got too much going on. All right. Going. So, Mook, you can say the answer, but okay. give it like five seconds. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, question two, here we go. What does it mean if some if your ears start itching? According to your according to mama. Oh, mm -hmm. I know that one. Mm -hmm. I know that one. All right. <laughs> so far we all <laughs> somebody talk about you, man. Somebody talk about you. Somebody saying something about you. Somebody talking about you. <laughs> all right. Let's see what we got next. These are too easy. <laughs> All right, so what, what does it mean if your hand itches? Money. Ooh. Right. It's got to be money. It's got to be. It's too easy. <laughs> I didn't pick the card. That's All right. You, Paco, you was black. black. <laughs> you triple black. What, who did the kid tell to purify herself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? Ooh. Ooh. Easy. That floaty. All right, we got one more person that didn't answer. I think it's Apollonia. It's Apollonia or Vanity. Okay, so somebody thought. I'm gonna say, was... I'm gonna say, cat, cat didn't answer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because that's American. That's American culture. Refer I pop culture reference. references here in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on now. I'm not giving her no excuse for Prince. You ain't getting no excuse. Yeah, yeah, that, that, is, that is Prince, though. Katusha, that's Prince. He had a movie. Oh, man. Purple Man, Purple Rain. It was he on too. He was on what? <laughs> Sorry, somebody's got to pass up Sheldon because Sheldon has the. I'm waiting to the like, last <laughs> second to answer. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't count mines because I like this is my game. So I have played this several times with my family. You know what I mean? That's cheating. Shell to be shell to be practicing his black. 
listen, listen. Then, Paco will tell you we did this on a family Zoom, and I like I got one wrong. Like you know what I'm saying? I got, I did get one wrong. You know? I'm gonna put yeah. some samba references and capoeira. All right, which city uh -oh, had the capoeira. Best next time? Next time, next time. What city? What had the best soul music? Detroit. Oh, that's Detroit, baby. Come on, everybody, man. answer what you think. Mm -hmm. Detroit. I'm saying, like, if you want to go with Ludacris, and, all right. Uh, so, so, and, all right. So, this is what it was, but this was a trick question. All of the answers were right. Exactly, but I, you got to go with Mo, you got to go with Motown. Though. I'm, I'm sorry, you got to go to Motown, baby. Oh I'm yeah, sorry. for sure, for sure. I like Motown. all the rest of them, but no, Motown, baby, they they started it. You know what I'm saying, but at AT, nobody said ATL for like Outcast is you know no, what I mean? no, it would be no ATL without Motown. Okay, oh, this is very that very true. Very Although true. Memphis was putting it down. <laughs> Yeah, like, Memphis was putting it down, but they weren't really yeah. selling records and, and going worldwide. You know what I mean? City, I that was know. the blues. That was the blues. Bill right. Street. Yeah. That was early. Sex. <laughs> All right, next. Let's see. I think this might, that might have, no, we got one more question. All right. So Mike is closing in on you, Sheldon. Uh oh. You I'm got, so got like, uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, here goes one. Who was the founder of the Nation of Islam? Uh, Fahar. Fahar Muhammad. Fahar. No more, uh, Elijah Muhammad. Wallace D. Fard. Fard taught Elijah. Fard. Yeah, yeah. Go back to your lessons, 120 lessons. Because, all right, somebody didn't answer. All right, here we go. Fard, baby. Fard. We do it. Hey. It's Fard. Yeah, one yeah. person got it right. Yeah, Wallace D. Fard taught Elijah Muhammad. That's right. Yeah, so if you go to the 120 lessons of the nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad established it as what it is you know today well actually what you knew it was like for malcolm x and then because it changed after he died right but um you know his son took it over and it came the world something ever and then farrakhan kind of brought it back to its origins but elijah muhammad he tells you that his uncle came from the east and taught him in those lessons so it's a it's wallace d far that wallace introduced him to islam and that Elijah Muhammad started the Nation of Islam because of those teachings. But you're saying that Wallace Fogg created the So in the lessons, Elijah himself, they credit Wallace Fogg as the founder. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. I understand. Praises are due forever. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I hear what you're saying, Tanya, but in the lessons, they themselves credit Wallace D. Fogg as, as- Makes like, sense. That makes sense. Okay, a lot of homework to do. <laughs> we got here. Um, which character from Cooley High was a regular cast member on A Different World? Ooh, ooh. I guess. Um, it would be after you guys guess this, I can put you guys down in a horror movie. I have movie no right idea what this okay. means. Oh. So that's that's homework for Katusha right there because yeah, uh, cool. Cooley High is like a classic Black American film. Yes, land rights, environmental land justice. Land <laughs> oh, come on now! I'm surprised that I'm the only person that got that right because you showed the picture. I, I, you know, I was trying to help. So I saw him in a um, what do you call it? In a horror film where he played a vampire. It was outrageous. <laughs> Joe, Please. bring that picture back real quick. Bring that picture back real quick. Okay. All right. So we're getting ready to show the podium and then I'll pull up. Oh, okay. Wait, I was second? Who <laughs> won? Good job. got you. Paco. Oh. Paco. Okay. Oh, so Paco played before it all too. Paco. <laughs> so I just you represented. We have to make sure to not have um regional questions included next time we do this <laughs> yes i'm going to make sure that i include some questions there yeah please do please do i have one where's the largest <laughs> hold on one second go ahead tanya what'd you say the largest populations of africans outside of the continent oh that's easy i'll Don't let somebody that. else answer first though brazil America. I'm going with America. I would say Brazil. Brazil. 
Brazil. 500 million? M more specifically in Bahia. Yes, which your host that lives in Bahia, um, Tanya, isn't that right? The yes. host of your next show is, is in Bahia. Yeah, fantastic. Cool, cool. So real quick, uh, we're gonna do um, what's next with Paco. Since uh, we're gonna we're gonna get wait wait Joe wait wait we got Joshua my bad uh Joshua was back Joshua okay. was back if everyone so um Joshua please give us a walkthrough of your um your garage and what you've been doing there with nature can so, you spotlight him so that he's um yeah I I don't know how to exactly spotlight I put it on speaker mode I'll do it oh I do want to do a thank, shake thank you Luana. <laughs> <laughs> Half of what Josh does in his garage, it also goes to his organic um, company. Josh, definitely tell him about Orsland and everything too, man. Yeah. So behind me, uh, right now, these these uh, shelves are kind of bare, but inside here, I grow microgreens and some, uh, a form of hydroponics called aquaponic greens called, um, all year round. But outdoors during the summer months, uh, I'm growing in my uh, raised beds and I have three greenhouses in the back. So what you see in here are, you know, probably like everything that just got harvested from a seven day uh, cycle. Uh, so these greens are ready in seven to 10 days. Um, I just did a couple of deliveries. So my, my uh, commercial fridge is kind of empty right now, but yeah. And I'm also kind of expanding. So I got like lights and other seedlings down there, but it's, it's not too pretty right now. It's not lush and green, but what I did do for you guys is I shared like five galleries in the chat and you can see my journey over the past five years of farming. Um, you know, I started in a one bedroom apartment. I actually started, you know, helping both sides of my uh, grandparents out. They were, they were all sharecroppers, but uh, I've been doing it for myself for about five years now, maybe a little longer than that. So it's not nice and pretty in here, um, but uh, if you look at that, the chat links, you'll see more about of what I do. <laughs> Um, and I also do natural cosmetics in here. You can see uh, soap curing behind me. So I've got soap and body butter over in the corner. All that's made on premise, uh, all organic ingredients, shea butter, coconut oils, essential oils. Nice. So, and I also do uh, rain catch over this. So I've got about a thousand gallons of rainwater being caught off the roof. So those IBC uh, totes over there comes off of the roof and all the water's filtered. And oh, that's dope. Got tilapia down in the corner there. Um, oh, wow. Wow. goldfish that's what powers the the aquaponics wow but it's it's like it's so busy in here you can't i, I can't really show you everything because i i'm just all over the place right now incredible you know, man. Person incredible with a desk is somebody that ain't doing nothing <laughs> that's well, yeah, yeah yeah hey hey so these are hey, joshua's hey, pictures wait 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 wait, wait, wait man. yeah yeah go ahead go ahead i'm showing the pictures of the the galleries that he talked wait. about while y'all asked the question uh, how can we do that? Is that a, a, a an online platform? How can we access your your products? Ah, good question. No, we uh, lost you. We lost yeah. your audio. He's on mute. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll share a link to the to the website where you can see the actual company information, and then look at the product lineups for cosmetics and uh, produce. Um, I'll share that here in a second. Uh, the e-commerce platform, I just moved it um, from Shopify over to my own custom platform. So you can't buy there right now. Uh, and, I, and I just jumped off Shopify just because I, I deliver locally in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And I don't want someone out in, in California ordering, you know, produce and I can't deliver it to, deliver it to them within a day. So uh, I'm, I'm currently off Shopify, but I will share the link and you'll be able to see uh, the, the new e-commerce platform that'll be out before Valentine's Day. Hey, Joshua. Yeah. Congratulations. Frederick Douglass's birthday. <laughs> Joshua. Yeah. You, you, I see you, 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 you got mad knowledge and mad techniques over there. Now, mm -hmm. you know, marijuana is, is the new shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with all the, did you know, I don't, you know, I used He's to say not that. in California. Hey, He's hey, in Charlotte, I'm not North Carolina. I'm not talking to you right now. I'm not talking to neither one of y'all right now. Okay. I'm talking to Joshua. Okay. With, yeah. with all your skills, you know, have you thought about, you know, going into that, you know, in that business, you know what I mean? And then, you know, trying to pop something off and, you know, get some money, you know what I mean? Cause uh, it's right now, that's the money. It's a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I've definitely thought about it, but I also think about okay, uh, what are the what is the, the the what is the process to get into it? You, you remember, I'm just gonna name a guy. I remember Nick Lachey from uh, what was that, 98 Degrees? Mm -hmm. He he purchased something like 4,000 acres in Ohio, and he was all set to uh, you know get started with it. And the politicians said, no, you can't do this because we need to make sure we line our pockets before we legalize it in Ohio. So I think about people that actually, you know, they haven't legalized it in North Carolina. So even if I grew it, I wouldn't be able to, to move it. And I don't exactly. know, I don't know the difference between good and bad weed. My entire family partakes in it, but I don't. I'm so, sure we have some people on this panel that yeah. could help hey, you hey, out. Hey, hey, let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me you tell you something. Joshua, quality Joshua, assurance me, people on this on this panel. Joshua, you. I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I don't know yo, uh, <laughs> you know how you feel as far as you know your soul when it comes to this, but brother, it's a lot of money right there with your knowledge. You don't even have to grow it with your you knowledge. You, right, you could consult, you could, you could make new genes, you can make new, all, you know, uh, with hey. the stuff that you know, you can really use that to really take yourself to another level, you know what I mean? That's if, if it doesn't bother, you know what I mean? Hey, real I, quick, I real quick, real quick, let me, let me throw this out there because I will let you know, like, right, so California has an initiative, Luana, you could back me up on this, right? Uh, because of the inequalities of the mass incarceration of Black people in, from marijuana, uh, California has an initiative to get black people into the marijuana industry. So mm. like you, that is something you it's a few places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. working on that. You know what I mean? It ain't, but you know, we talking about that. The inequality. Well, we had to advocate for that because for a minute on one hand, it was brothers that was still locked up. And then it was these other people who was making all this money off of knowledge that they had PhD level expertise in. Exactly. Yes, that's, yes. That, that's, that's why right. Brought, that's why I said what I said. That's why I brought it up. You know what I mean? That's, that's right. That's right. Don't get into it just because there's there's the politicians want to be lined up first. And as long as they're, they're they're in place, then then you can actually, you know, make way for yourself. And and not only that, even if I was to grow hemp, you have to get all your hemp seeds from the government. You can't just start growing hemp, which isn't, you know, it's still well, like a supposedly schedule. Kamala and uh, President Joe Biden are going to legalize it. I mean, there's right, only right. 11 states. There's I'm only 11. There's only 11 states where it's not legal. Right. I mean, once it's so legal, yeah, I'll get into it. So yeah, okay. we already got a two thirds. That was the answer right there. That, OK, that, yeah, that definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and we got a politician right here, Dr. Lawana Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> President of the San Diego Women's Democratic Chapter. Can you see it? Give me a little, little hand clap. You don't hear him? <laughs> no, no, no. I think you gotta share your you gotta share your um you, uh, your music again. Get that set up because we're about to go to you. But before we go to you, we're gonna do uh what's next with Paco. Get it all in, man. Thank you for the hand claps, man. Hello. Yeah, I just want to answer Joshua because I have a situation with fungus gnats because of my plants. If he could oh. give me advice on how to get rid of them. Well, it depends. Are you an organic farmer or do you like chemicals? I'm all organic, so. I, I just want them gone. <laughs> hey, you can <laughs> go get I don't recommend it, but you can go get Roundup or any chemical. That, oh, that don't you, go get Roundup. No, 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 no. 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 If you, if you, so if you Roundup just paid a billion dollars for right. cancer lawsuits. Right, but it's still on all the produce in the stores. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> they wash it off. But to, to answer your question, if you want an organic solution, you can, you can uh, buy beneficial plants. They're, they're different types of herbs and plants that fight off specific bugs. And you have to do beneficial planting. You can't just have like a bunch of kale or a bunch hey, of tomatoes. You have to go to the hardware store and get ladybugs also. You can get ladybugs. Ladybugs, yep. They'll, they'll eat aphids and all kinds of other things. But, and you could, I could go down a list of things that you could do to combat them. But if, you, if you're going organic, it's going to be uh, harder. But what you can do is just do beneficial planting. That's your best bet. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Oh, um, Mook, we got your we got your sound now, man. So you want you want to try out a sound effect? Can you hear that? Nope. Nope. You still can't hear that? No. Oh, no. And, and it says you're right. sharing computer sound. I did that again, brother. It I says you it says you're sharing. Yeah. I don't know what the. <laughs> All right. Well, while you while you figure that out, we're gonna do what's next with Paco. All right. 
What's next with Paco? Luana, can you spotlight him? How do, how do we do I can nah, you don't need you don't need to do all of that. I like looking at all of y'all <laughs> club, bro. That's oh there we go. I hear the clapping. There we go. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah. We good we now. Good. We good. We, we good. good. We good. <laughs> ah. Rain, brother. <laughs> Environment, environmental justice. And um it, it's a concept and um I wasn't prepared to go right now, man. Y'all got me. <laughs> Take your time, Paco. Take your time. I'm gonna Take start start over again. Matter of fact, right. I'm gonna give you some music this time. No that <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> 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 Put my headset on. Brother Joshua had his headset on. I was like, they made me take my headset off last time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, man. I mean, you know, I was, to back on. Because well, I didn't know if you was playing Fortnite or if you was here with us, bro. I, oh. You know what? You know, what I just thought about Paco. What's that? You remind me of Lord Jamal. Yeah. You're about yeah, to be like, I don't know why I get I get that vibe from you, man. For some reason, I love Lord Jamal. I I'm sure he loves you as well, brother Moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, environmental justice as a concept is the fair distribution of environmental resources, benefits, and benefits for all to benefit. Damn, I shouldn't have did that. Okay, to improve as well as to improve and maintain a clean, healthy environment, especially for those that traditionally live and work and play closest to sources of pollution. Like, my question is, what is environmental just, justice without environmental enforcement? In my opinion, the, the guy that lives up in Poland Springs, Maine, he, he needs you know, his, his his water and land is untouched by pollution. He needs you no know, environmental justice, you know what I mean? Now, that brings me to the topic of food deserts. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with what a food desert is, it's defined as an urban area in which it's difficult to buy affordable goods, quality fresh foods, and many poor people live in food deserts, you know what I mean? Food deserts, research would say food deserts are brought about by a number of factors, but typically uh, they're located in uh, uh, poor areas where people don't own cars and uh, they have very uh, less disposable income uh, and lack of uh, transportation. I said that already, my oh, God. How do you know you're in a food desert? Did y'all lose, Paco? No, no, we here, we here. Go ahead, keep going. How do you know you're in a food, food desert? McDonald's liquor store, Chinese food laundry mat. Right? That's that's the typical, I guess, uh, visual or or you know the demo, demo, demographic of the area. Yeah, pretty much. You have more more liquor stores than you have grocery stores in the neighborhood. How how do we close the access uh, to healthy foods gaps? Now I live in New York. Mook, Mook don't live, I think I'm from the Bronx no more, but Mook, New York and Bronx and Long Island are like eight minutes from each other. They're like, you know, I'm not saying I'm from the Bronx. I live in the Bronx. I'm repping the BX. You know, it's not from where you're from, it's where you're at, you know. So if I <laughs> go, you know what I mean? Where you, at? you know what I, I mean? Just, I just got disconnected. If I knew Paco was going to come after me and shit after Cause, cause he he got a lot of the Bronx in him now. He been there for a long time. You know, so he... just <laughs> in my area is it's littered with bodegas, and the only thing you can get at a bodega is a honey bun, some chips, and maybe a a, a sandwich that they say is fresh. You know what I mean? They touch the sandwich is gonna be fresh, but you know that chicken cutlet is maybe a week old that you're getting. You know what I mean? So. Thanks. How do we close the, the access to healthy food gaps? Now, what uh, the brothers are doing, uh, like Brother Joshua just showed us, like there are urban community gardens, but for the most part, 
from my research, I've noticed that most of them are cooperative gardens. There's a difference between an urban community. An urban community garden is set up with public funds and they go and they go beg the city. Oh, there's this empty lot over here. Let me grow some tomatoes on here for the, so for the old ladies in the neighborhood. But, you know, that takes legislation. That takes getting politicians involved. The cooperative gardens are set up all over in mostly gentrified neighborhoods where these people could afford to, to bring in a truck full of soil. They could afford to bring in, you know, things of these into a major city. Now, um, there are some resources out there. Uh, I, I'm probably sure Joshua and his group are familiar with the National Black Farmers Association. They're a nonprofit organization that represent African-American farmers in the United States. And I've been doing some research on them and I tried to get uh, a comment on food deserts from them being that they grow a lot of food and are told to destroy it uh, via uh, messed up government contracts. But uh, right now they're currently in litigation and can't comment on they They have a big class action suit against- uh, 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 Department of Agriculture? Yeah, the Department of Ag, thank you, Sheldon. And um, uh, basically they're not being given the same subsidies and access to government loans that white farmers are getting. And this is causing them to lose their land and their homes. So once they lose the land, if you don't got no black farmers growing, you know what I mean? Uh, so we have uh, a bit of a conundrum and um, I think that more people should get together and start putting their own money instead of, you know, putting money on buying bags of chips, put their money together and buy some seeds and start a cooperative garden and think things of that nature. What do you guys think? This is actually something that I've, I've watched a documentary about food deserts and stuff like that. And, you know, I've spoken to Josh about some stuff, but I think there it's issues within our community is, is take, we'll take a multi-pronged approach because you know, a lot of times we'll look at the lack of, right? So for example, the lack of government subsidies, the lack of education, et cetera, et cetera. But I think also at a certain point within our community, we also have to take some accountability for certain stuff as well. Um, because when I watch that, like there are, there are reports that will say, and the thing with numbers is you can literally manipulate numbers to tell any story, even if you're looking at the same set of data. I'm from I'm from Wall Street, brother Mike. I used to work on Wall Street. <laughs> I don't know if that's a joke or not. But, but, I'm, I'm I'm dead serious, man. Okay, cool, cool. Manipulate. I'm a quant, brother. I know all about what you're talking about. Exactly. You know, so you'll see sometimes they'll have reports to say, "Well, we try, but then people don't really use it, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But when you look at like the state of our community. A lot of people don't, and I, I think this all kind of boils back down to the issue of self-worth, right? Like I recently lost 30 pounds. Um, my diet was, I was drinking every day. Um, I'll smoke occasionally here and there. And I just really wasn't taking care of myself. I'm 31 years old, right? So I, I was up to like 2.30. Um, and right before I got married, October 24th, I told myself, man, I want to lose this weight. So what I've been going through on a more spiritual level for the past year and some change was actually detoxifying my body, right? Now I'm on the process of detoxifying my mind. So I've been working with Will to make sure he gets his knowledge up with, uh, you know, just general knowledge. So every day I'm literally waking up, I'm working out as well as reading a book. You know what I mean? And that's my daily ritual. So going back to food deserts, I, I do have to ask, from a macro perspective within our community, how much of us are really concerned about proper diet? You know what I mean? So I'm I'm gonna wait. So I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in there. I'm gonna say that I'll be I'll be um, generous. I'll say 45 percent. I'll say 100 percent of us are concerned, but I'll say 40 percent are actually concerned because it's something they can deal with and and do something about. Because that, when you talk about our community, essentially, we deal with issues that we could do things about. The ones that we can't, we leave it to Jesus, 
right? Or we leave it to whatever that is, right? And that's no that's no knock on those people that do that. What it is a knock on though, it's a knock on that systematic oppression, that ghost in the machine that's been set up to constantly churn you over and over so that you can't even look, like Tanya said earlier, She these kids live less than 10 miles from a beach, but had never been there, right? So it's a wonderful thing that you have, um, become woke and conscious and started to work on yourself. But that to get our whole community to that, that's one of the reasons we're here today is to give people options and avenues and ways that they could come to that. Tanya, go ahead. You. So I think one of the things is that sometimes things are, when things are too large, it becomes a little difficult for people who don't have opportunity every day or that maybe don't have the same exposure to information, but something simple as um, living in an apartment and you can, like what plants can I, can you instruct someone that lives in an apartment, let's say in the projects and what can they grow? Can they grow tomatoes in their house? And like, is there a way that you can instruct them to do little things? Because I grew tomato, if someone grows tomatoes in their house, then they're like excited to put it in their salad. You know, like, if you start small sometimes it, it's easier to it's easier easier to grasp i i agree 100 percent. so kind of jumping to the beginning of like the call when i was talking about our essentials page that is one mm -hmm. of the articles in which we want to have is how to grow plants indoors so one thing one resource that i found was how to actually grow um carrots indoors mm -hmm. stars you know so and that's why i said i think curing our community is a multi-pronged approach because right, correct. there is a lot of you know, a lot of helplessness, right? A lot of lack in our community. But I also do think it does take a lot of, we need to start looking inward, you know, mm -hmm. and, and more community-based things. So that's why, you know, I definitely appreciate this platform and other platforms, because I feel like we have pockets of us that have transcended what's typically socially accepted. Definitely. And we're going to do our part. And by coming together, kind of like Voltron a little bit, we're like, okay, we can enact some change, you know? So that's why I said multi-pronged approach because it, it is a lot that, you know, I tell my wife every day, like we're coming from any little complaint I have, it's coming from a place of privilege, right? Mm -hmm. From tone, from, from a whole bunch of different things. And a lot of people, you know, they're not aware, they're not aware of the privilege. They're not aware of the opportunity afforded. And a lot of times when we have those that have made it out, Right? All three members of my team are very successful in our own individual way. So that's why with Black to Nature, we're not looking to get rich off of this. You know, we're actually, I spent a lot of money on it. You know, we've been doing this for a while. So <laughs> a lot of what we do is really just from a place of we've been blessed in our own right. Let's come together, utilize our skills and do what we can for those that want the information. So even when you go to the food deserts, I definitely think there are those within our community that wants but can't mm -hmm. access. But right. I do think a lot of times we have a majority mm -hmm. so that even if they're aware, they kind of, they're not ready to hear it yet. Right. You yeah. know, as you were talking, I'm sorry to cut you off. As you were talking, I, you know, I, my creative mind started going. I mean, imagine that there was a land, you know, a land upstate is very inexpensive, upstate New York. But imagine that there was a purchase of a large, not so large, but a decent amount of land upstate where you could take someone in Harlem and say, you know what, for $10 a month, we're going to give you this little space. Mm -hmm. You're going to purchase this little space. And so just like you would take a bus trip to, to Atlantic City, um, once a month, you take the bus upstate to your little land area and you can get your, I'm, you know, I'm just throwing out an idea. Um, you, you can get your food, you know, you, you get it, So they have a sense of ownership and it deals with not having to deal with the legislation of trying to find the space in an urban area. It's just an idea. So, I, like, I, I love, I love, oh, I'm sorry, Luan, do you? Luana, uh, go no, I was just going to say those uh, uh, what you're suggesting. Um, yeah, I like the idea of people going on a field trip, but within urban communities, there are community garden projects that are popping up 
that make it more accessible for people who live in apartments or live where they don't have um, viable or you know whatever the land issue is. And they're doing they're doing that model that you described here in San Diego. We have a thing called Project New Village. Um, mm -hmm. We're not only they doing urban gardening, they're also looking at creating, um, she just got a grant, she's building now, creating space, not only for um, gardening, but also for just sustainability projects. Oh, I, I understand. So, because I'm sure the so issues in California might be a little different from New York. I lived in um, Harlem from like- Yeah, because you guys have a lot more concrete. <laughs> Yeah, but in actual in actuality, real quick, I just want to say that, like, so, like, a lot of, like, Pete was Paco was saying earlier, uh, that the National Black Farmers Association is actually located in Virginia, right? So there's a lot of black farmers in Virginia, right, which is only a six hour drive from New York, right? So what you're saying, Tanya, is totally possible, it, and it doesn't have to even just be in New York, right? There's a lot of land that in New Jersey and but like obviously in Virginia and Maryland where um, people from our community own or have vested interest in the, that land. And imagine you, you lease land, like you're saying, Tanya, from black farmers in Virginia who are having troubles. They're, they're being told in order to get these subsidies from the government, they got to destroy their product, right? Imagine we have brothers go down there with the trucks, pick this up and bring it to communities that really need it. So. There, there are solutions. I just wanted to say uh, something related to the t moment that we are and maybe linking with other topics that we had in previous recordings, which is being in time of COVID. Uh, so, and also to bring some context with, it's the Brazilian context in the rural area where the Colombo I just mentioned before, uh, had a huge amount of land. Um, however, just to wait for the tractor to come and clean the land, uh, it was about six months wait. I know that we are not just going to focus on the infrastructural issues that we have, but creating awareness of the importance of this, creating like an educational process in which our youngsters are actually engaged in this process like they want to plant potatoes they want instead of instead of going to mcdonald's i don't know who who, who likes that not nothing against but instead of going to mcdonald's actually having a fresh baked potato that in in our freshly made oven my dad just built one uh, there this is this is something that is really difficult I, I don't mean to say difficult but it's a challenge you know mm -hmm. just having this uh dialogue between modernity and well ancestor uh ancestral uh, uh education and knowledge um that this dialogue i don't know uh, creates some kind of um urgent need especially in the covid time because people are not traveling to go to the land uh, we used to have volunteers and they're not coming and it is complicated it's just to say complicated i don't want to put the weight of negativity in this message but just like the challenges of covid especially in black rural communities are real so uh, i know luana has got her hand up and I'm going to go to you one second, Luana, but I do want to reply to that. So Edfu Foundation is a partner with uh, with the Colombo Yele Ashe, help me. Yes, we totally support them. And, um, and we're organizing a youth summit. But one of the things we can do is, okay, well, let's, let's leverage that and let's also see what resources or oh, human resources we could use to get people down there. Hey, instead of like economic, tour, like what do they call that? Um, uh, environmental tourism. Let's go to Brazil and help them get it straight. And then let's get somebody that does import and export and export some of the extra vegetables and things like that to our, our communities here in America, right? So I just wanted to, to put that out there like that. And a great platform that we would use would be Black to the Nate, Black to Nature. You know what I mean? But uh I just want to put that out there. And now Luana, go ahead. Can you um when you guys are ready, 
because what I would like to do as well is maybe we can help you like with marketing and, and try to maybe plan out some type of trip. Cause like I said, multi-pronged approach, right? For our community. And, and I definitely think Katusha, what you were mentioning as far as that psychological barrier, it, it's a shift that we have to take within our community. Um, and I, I think that's something we should definitely be pushing. So if there's anything we can do from black to nature, to assist market, whatever, please let us know because I will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> please do. Please yeah, do. yeah, yeah. I think so. I think what as a result of this, as a result thank of this you, podcast, we will we will set up a meeting with Black to Nature and the Colombo so we can discuss ways that we can move forward and get more access to our brothers and sisters, um, you know, internationally. You know, um, like Paco treat or something. And yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And Paco's got to go. Uh, Paco, you want to say goodbye to the people before you bounce out, bro? Y'all have a good day. It was good speaking with y'all. I respect <laughs> and appreciate what all y'all do. And uh, keep up the good work. Have a good one, Paco. Peace, Peace Paco. Peace, Paco. Bye, Paco. I also have a meeting in 10 minutes. Would you excuse me? I yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Dr. Bento, we will definitely be in touch. We will connect uh, Black, to, uh, Black to Nature and, and you. Thank um, you, Dr. Bento. But what we got to do, before you go, if, yes. if you got a minute or two, we're going to do a musical moment with Mugnito. Before... Yes, sir. All right, Pete to the ghosts. MF Doom, Debbie Wildhouse, Rick James, you dig? Nato, let's get it in. Huh. No beef like you vegan, just fresh produce from the God and the eating. Sold by the pal, get a YN season. Show your brother love while your brother's still breathing. The villain, you can never label him a heathen or demon. Even though we get down and dirty, that's if the situation deems thee worthy. Nerdy, never had the front for the YouTube. Never wore ice, but he still was a cool dude. If you're hot, yeah, the fans gon' follow. When you can't sell crack and be an Instagram model. At least not at the same time. Mook wouldn't show you shit if you was legally blind. It's a crime. You ain't supposed to tell the fucking cops. Plus half of your gang probably working for the ops. Stop. Let's start to be less stupid. You can be black plus smart and do music. The whole room fell silent as if they expect some food to get violent. Bring it. I earn my strikes like Adidas and I don't need Kanye to tell me I'm a genius. You can learn a lot from a jizzer. And if he don't know, you can go ask the RZA. Student who wrote every rhyme with a blueprint and tweaked his technique every time he learned new shit. Life is much more than a new whip. New kicks, gold chain, or a cute chick. Mook shit. On point like a toothpick. Q-tip. Lost move like he foo Huh. Put that on my fife dog. Too quick. Ran by your man in a light jog. Run shit without breathing hard. When you see him spit, you would then believe in God. Humbling. Who want a slice of this pie? It's free. See me. Get the best buy. The best eye. You wouldn't want to be a target. Greet you at Walmart. Looking all retarded. Bombarded. Bombs over Baghdad. Shocking. Always what they using for the hashtag. Uncle Mook, he like to pass gas. Rip the big joke in half and get the last laugh. Talk class in a pass lab. The type of guy you want with you in the cash cab. He get mean with the words before they ever labeled him king of the nerves. Before they ever labeled him king of the nerves. Make sure you bring thee the herbs. Oh. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Yeah. Oh. Afro Dots, baby. Still how we get there. Yeah, thank y'all, all, all y'all for. Yo, wait, 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 Mook, before you go, I did a Facebook story, man, uh -oh. and I uh, I used that Thundercats that that line. You remember that line you said from Thundercats, bro? They always ask us to forget. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Can we get that real quick? Oh, you got me on the spot right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn, I can't remember what I can't remember how it started. Can you give me a some like um they always ask us to forget? Oh man, um oh. oh that's a hard one, bro. I got like a million. Jeez, I wasn't <laughs> you should have you should we'll, we'll we'll come back to you real quick. We'll you did, you. you did, you did. Yo, but well, we appreciate you. 
with the hotness, with the fire. <laughs> Every week, you can expect, you know what I mean? A musical moment with Lupito, a new joint. So uh, thank you, thank you. Um, yes, yes, Lawana, go ahead. Um, before we go, I just oh. want to invite everybody to the Afrofuturism Dream Tank next Sunday if they can. And before, what I was going to say is we talk to people about being aspirational and wanting to eat healthy and be healthy. And, you know, I get told, you know, all those things are a luxury. If people think dreaming, which is just imagining something better, is a luxury, then when we start talking about concrete, tangible actions that deviate from addressing what they consider their immediate needs, um, it's really just more complicated and more challenging. Um, I do Afrofuturism dream tanks in order to remind people that, you know, it, it's still not illegal and it doesn't cost money to think. And we can think our way around and out of many of the problems that we have if we follow those thoughts with action. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And let's not let's not forget. So I'm sorry, Luana. Dr. Katusha Bento did say she has another meeting. I don't want to keep her from that. I wanted to say goodbye, but then we're gonna go back and talk about the dream tank because we did want to discuss this uh this episode. So uh Dr. Bento, please. Thank you, everyone. This was a wonderful meeting. I I am taking so much from, from you. Uh, I learned so much here also about the more about the US American culture after that quiz I think <laughs> we need another Lake one. Minitaka yes Prince you need to I go received look a up. message that I was on the top five there was only five people in the <laughs> <laughs> you need so Cooley High Cooley High <laughs> and Purple Rain that's all you need Next to time go gonna talk out. about we're gonna have some questions about Black history in Brazil <laughs> and Capoeira and stuff. Zumbi, Zumbi, Zumbi. Zumbi, yeah, for sure. Dandara. Um, Dandara. Uh, well, thank you and peace and love to you all. I hope to see you and meet you again. Take care. Yes, Bye. definitely. You will definitely have a have good day. Going, thank Dr. you for Pinto. being with us. We appreciate Bye. you. Take care. Sheldon, I have to go. But okay, so wait real quick so before you go. So uh, February 27th on uh, Zoom. Are you going to be live on Facebook, live on YouTube? Uh, how do people tune in on February 27th? Or do we need to wait until, you know, I'm uh, sometime? I'm sending out an invite soon. It's going to be live on YouTube. And I'm also live streaming a concert from the Solomon Islands soon. So I'm very excited about that. Nice. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you being here and we look forward to talking to you again and uh, wish you all the best. Love you, cuz. No Love doubt. Take, Take care. care. All right, bye-bye. So Dr. Lawana Richmond, um, the dream tank is coming up. Yeah, it's on Valentine's Day or as I like to call it, Frederick Douglass's birthday. And um, the name of the event is Dream Forward 2081. I'm, ho I'm holding it at UC San Diego. Um, they're basically creating all of the, doing all the logistics for me. Um, but it's an Afrofuturism dream tank, which is something that I made up one day um, because I feel like beyond just thinking in concrete, you know, terms about the things that we are currently experiencing, I really want us to imagine um, what the future we want because when we focus our energy only on what we don't want, we only continue to get what we don't want. Right. And so, and so at the Dream Tank, what I do is I bombard people with um, music, sometimes poetry, art, just different um, sensory experiences to um, provoke thought. And in this case, I'll start off with kind of a quick, this is the run of the day, These are. this is the lineup, this is what you'll need. The biggest thing I ask people to do is to trust their heart and their imagination. I have an artist who's gonna do a quick demo on how to do some marker art just for people who don't consider themselves artists. I'll be showing videos, having speakers. Um, Max Moses, also known as Pose2, is an Afrofuturist muralist who does murals in the community and all over the world. Some of his murals are on skyscrapers and he's um, published books of um, affirmations. 
Um, Elise Smith Cooper is a local storyteller who partnered with a DJ and producer to create a series of videos for a local playhouse um, that I'm also using as catalyst. I have an urban alchemist who's going to talk about community building, but the whole flow of it will be um, stimulus, um, reflection, where people have a minute to journal or draw or do both, um, and then dialogue, because a dream tank is an immersive um, participant guided experience. And then at the very end, we bring it all together and talk about visions for the future. In this case, I picked 60 years in the future because the university I'm hosting it at just celebrated its 60th anniversary. And the question is, what do we want to have seen occur or experience um, by 60 years from now? And then what do we need to do? The closing will be what are concrete actions we can do individually and collectively to help guide ourselves in the direction of the things that we say we dream about. So it'll be fun. Some people will be entertained, some people will be inspired, and hopefully some people will be activated. And hopefully all three. Yes. Um, and we can get more information at, doc, is it LawanaRichmond.com? DrLawana.com. DrLawana.com. And she will be sending me the link. So you will be able to get it at edfoodfoundation.org, theconservancycorp.org, and I will post it on any social media that I have. I will be in attendance. And I'm sure our guests will all be in attendance to support this wonderful event.